July the 3rd. Uh, we just finished uh, wrapping up the XD part of the uh, first half. I wanted to introduce some of the more advanced components and settings that you can apply to your uh, assignment due next week. And now we're going to segue our ways into Figma, as I promised you earlier. So let's start without further ado. I'm going to share my screen. So here we go. Here, okay. So first you have to install Figma. Figma is a free application, okay? Um, it came around the time in the, you know, uh, mid 2000, well, 2000 and I guess 15, 16, 17, it started getting more popular. There was Sketch, there was XD, there was other programs that were coming up in the UX, UI design. And Figma kind of grew as a community driven software and the, today became the industry standard. So a lot of, you know, companies use Figma and they still use XD. A lot of companies I know still some professionals that still use XD in the industry. It's just a matter of time when one gets phased out or one might get reignited and by the other. Don't forget, these corporations play some really nasty games. I told you earlier, they offered these guys $20 billion, billion and they didn't, they didn't go for it, right? So who knows what might happen next? Maybe they'll give them more money, right? Uh, here, 20 was it 20 billion? Let me just double check. Billion dollars for Figma, right? So Adobe agreed to acquire Figma for $20 billion, half cash and half stock, right? An additional 6 million restricted stock. So this was, uh, again, something that, that was in the works and then it's valued at $12.5 billion, Figma. Adobe gave it 20 or 10 and 10, and they didn't really agree to the value. So we can see how the numbers play with companies buying other companies and software. It affects us because at the end of the day, we're learning stuff that we have to produce. So that's why we used XD for the past four or five years. But up until 2023, December last year, this happened. They canceled the move. They didn't really take the offer. So then we say, hey, you know what? Adobe stopped supporting XD. It's still application, but it stopped doing updates and things like that. So people got a little afraid and everybody started going towards Figma now. So I think still uh, Figma is the way to focus on for you guys with, with this stuff. But XD is still a tool, right? It's like when you go home, I still have a, the hammer, the screwdriver, different tools do different things. So you can use them for what they're for, okay? All right, so do a little bit of that. Uh, to get Figma, you have to go online. Just go to figma.com. As I mentioned to you earlier, what you need to do is download um, Figma, uh, the desktop version. You can run it on a browser, but it's much better if you run it from the actual desktop computer application. So please make sure you install it. I even used Figma on my tablet. It worked well. The mobile phone, with the mobile phone, I don't recommend it too much <clears throat> because it's, it's kind of small, the screen to work with. But the computer is the best way, of course, to use these programs, especially with keyboards, shortcuts, mouse, things like that. Um, Two thousand twelve, Dylan Field. That's when they started working on. Um, Figma. I just wonder what year was that? So San Francisco, California, that's when they launched the first Figma prototype. All right, so there's your. Next the origin. Two thousand eighteen, yeah. So there was a little bit of a gap between the two programs. Once you download Figma as an application, it should appear like a thumbnail, like your normal, you know, application type of um, icon. And you can see mine is located right over here. Okay, so I just simply made a shortcut on the on the taskbar. Okay, or the dock, I should say. It's a Mac, the PC. It's called the taskbar. I just kind of easy launch the software. Like I said, it's easier to run these um, 
um, these tools uh, on the desktop platform. OK, when you first open the application, it might get overwhelming because there's a lot of things to look at. Uh, my rule of thumb is just kind of start from the top left corner and analyze what's being presented, right? So you have things like this is like your main platform. So this is the application. Oh, by the way, one more thing. When you do get Figma, make sure you use your Humber credentials. Why? Because you can pass for. A, I'm not saying for you to lie, but because I said I'm a teacher, it gave me this kind of thing. You can see you're a student. You might get the same privileges because you're, you're in the educational industry. They'll give you some. I think they'll give you like the, the paid version, right? So if you can kind of get it, try it. Just say you're a student or maybe you're, you know, kind of learning how to use the software. It's free anyways, but there's also um, a paid edition. All the paid edition lets you do is when you do like uh, when you guys do the group project, you can still do, from what I understand, a group project for free. But if you do more than two, three projects at a time, it gives you a limit. It doesn't let you do more than three per individual. But if it's a group project, it's only one. So you can only do one shareable project, but you can only do three individual projects. So there's a limit, but enough for us to get by. And from doing this last semester for the first time with my other group of students, I had a group of 32 students. We had no problem. Okay, so everybody worked out well. There was a few learning humps along the way, just like any other software. There's glitches, things happen. You know, there's a learning curve to everything. We did okay. So it was, it was a great learning environment. So I'm going to produce the same for us going forward. Okay. So you, when you have this option here, you have a couple of choices to choose from. This is your home button right here. Okay. This is to open up a new file or a new tab. Okay. This is your recents. You might not have anything recent yet, so don't worry about it. There's something called drafts. Okay, drafts is something you would have worked on. And there's also projects. There's admin. Okay, there's um, basically there's a team option as well. Okay, I'm gonna go with um, with the new file to start with. Okay, so you can just either click on the the new tab here to open a new file. Or you can just click on a new design file up here. New design file, Fig Jam board. This is where you, this is where you get to collaborate with other designers. It's called a Fig Jam. When you mix fruits together, you get jam. When you mix professionals together, you get Fig Jam. Right? It's what they call it. It's a cool little hip word. Uh, it's also a whiteboard and diagrams. You can get a lot of planning and designing done with Fig Jam. It's 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 like your um. It's like your mood board, mood board or a draft board to get ideas. So it could be used for multiple things. OK, um, uh, this is a new thing called slide deck. OK, it's a beta version. OK, so they're still working on it. It's just basically putting a slide deck together. So these are your main options here. I suggest all of us right now, just for starters, click on a new design file right now from scratch. Go ahead and you should get like a nice clean canvas to show for. Now, uh, I don't know what kind of, um, there's the settings as well. I got my dark mode and light mode. What mode do you guys have? Okay. I think you can change it over here under settings. You guys see it here somewhere? Anyways, not important, but if you want to change it, you there's a way to, to do it there. Like the dark thing. Anyways, whatever. You can also find it. There's a help menu here. You can type stuff in. It'll give you all the different options. This is like your Windows menu. Okay. So you can see everything that's there. This is your design board. Let me just quickly walk around and make sure everyone's okay. I think it's on me too, actually. Yeah. Let me just. Oh, theme. Here it is. Theme. Okay. In case you want to change your theme, I can do a lot. But when you change the theme, this won't change right away. You have to open up a new file, but then it'll change. Okay. So maybe I'll do the light file. I'll do dark file. It's easier because of the contrast of the light. There, 
Okay, let me come around and make sure it works. Create a new account. No, not Gmail. At Humber.ca. Yeah. Humber? Yeah. Okay, but Humber also they said. No, you can't sign in. You gotta get new. You create a new account. New account? Yeah. Okay. You're creating a new account. Humber doesn't know we're using. Well, they do, but we're not kind of. It's not like the Adobe. You don't log in with your Humber email. You're creating a new account where you're using your Humber credentials. Okay. Now, if you want to use your personal Gmail credentials, that's okay too. If that works, okay? Because maybe when you finish school, you want to keep that too. Maybe it's better if you want to do Gmail. Try both. Make two accounts to see what works. But if you stick to one, is logging okay? Okay. Between different teams. So here's your here's Figma. Okay. It's pretty simple once you create a new design. It's actually very similar to XD. <laughs> right? The difference is the tools are not here, right? They're not on the left side going down vertically. They're up top, like here, going horizontal. That's the tools. Okay. This is your layers and assets, very similar positioning here. You don't have to look for it like in XD, like little icons to get this visible. So they're right here. There's your assets. Assets are like uh, components. You know how we did the assets in, in XD? Same thing, right? When you create components and different uh, usable items, they're going to appear as assets, okay? But when you use layers, you're going to see layers. Now, layers are composed of uh, frames, which is a, it's like an artboard system that Figma likes to use, along with objects and shapes and different things. All right, so everything will be populated here. This is page. I like pages. Pages lets you organize different pages, basically. I'll be honest with you, sometimes you can just do one page. You don't have to do pages at all. It just creates different sections or main sections of the project. So we'll just stick with page one for now. So there's your main um, items here. There's your tools. There's your menu. This is your file name. It's untitled right now. Let's, let's give it a name. Call it, uh, you know, uh, beginner's uh, exercise or something like that. This is how you can share your work. This is dev mode if you're working with developers, which we're not going to do, which is going to keep the design mode for now. This is your login credentials name. This is how you can play your forward type. This is all your properties like XD, same thing on the right side. So you see the similarities very, you know, pretty much the same. Only difference is some of the little positionings and shortcuts and functionality, of course. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it's a different software. It's not the same as XD, but they're both kind of centered along the same premise of creating interactive user interface presentations. All right, so now let's go ahead and, and start with an artboard. So before you start anything, I mean, you could start drawing shapes and stuff. So for example, this is your main selection tool. And yes, there's a scale tool, just like Illustrator, you have select and scale in the same one. You can use the same tool for both, but this one is more geared towards scale. Now the shortcuts, I'm amazed. They're very similar to Adobe shortcuts. Like V is the move tool, just like Photoshop, right? Scale is K, right? Um, this is your main, this little, don't ignore this icon here. This is like your main application Figma icon. So if you click on this top left corner, it gives you all the menu options. So that's your main menu, eh? Like import, copy, paste, like all these different arrange, send to back, bring to front. It's all here. Now you can also access the same menu from up here. See, up here or down here. So there's several ways of doing the same thing. It comes down to preference and what you decide to use for your own liking. Okay, uh, then this is the move tool here. You can move in, like I mentioned earlier, you can move in scale. Going over, this is the frame tool. What separates XD and Figma, the number one thing that I noticed, the big difference was this tool right here, the frame tool. And the frame tool is the difference between creating artboards or interactive components in the software. So without frames, basically you can't do anything. And you can put frames inside other frames. It's like sections in your, HTML website. Speaking of sections, there's sections as well. But I'll be honest with you, I've done projects and I've seen other projects that 
people don't use these two sections or slices. I call them miscellaneous options. But if you want to be more organized and create a section and put a UI kit, you can. But frames is your ultimate tool in the software. OK, so think about that frames. The shortcut is F for frames. Um, so I'm going to use the frames right now. If, if you click on the frame tool and you go over here on, on your screen, you can basically create a frame of any size. You can move the frame anywhere you like. You can resize the frame. If you notice on the right here, you have the properties. You have the X and Y positioning and the width and the height of the frame. So if you're doing like a website, you can make it like, you know, uh, you know 16, 1400 pixels wide. Uh, 1200 pixels tall or whatever the website size is you can also click on a preset size for an iphone or an ipad or an android how do you do that you simply click over here okay and you can actually specify a size from the frame from the defaults over here so let's all select iphone 14 and 15 pro max which is today's up-to-date uh, model right so if you click on that this is the actual size and if, if I zoom in, shift, I think shift one or shift two, uh, or even command minus, command plus, command zero also zeros in. A lot of the Adobe shortcuts work here, okay? I like to use shift one or shift two. It's kind of zeros in everything out, okay? You can also use the space bar to get the hand tool to pan around. I love how um, adaptable it is to the stuff we already know using the Adobe software, okay? Uh, let's call this, uh, you know, uh, beginner exercise, right? If you want to change the size at any time, if you go back to the frame tool, right, you can change it to a different size altogether using these um, settings, okay? All right. So now that you have the, the size selected, um, we're going to move over to the right and select different objects. As you know, a lot of the interactive stuff on your phone that you look at consists of different visual elements. Those elements are created of different shapes like buttons, rectangles, oval shapes, circles, rectangles, polygons, lines, okay, uh, and images and video. So all the stuff that you want to place in your design is located right under here. OK, so you can basically get any one of these and get things together. Well, well, I want you to do this. I mean, we do have the whole semester, half of it remaining to work with the software. So I'm going to kind of go in, in, in more intricate detail with these tools to get you familiar. Right now, I'm just doing a quick, quick general overview. Yes, we have the inf infamous pen tool and the pencil tool. I don't know if you guys are into the pencil tool, but it's hard to control, right? especially if you have like a mouse. Uh, you can kind of do this and then it becomes an object. Just like an illustrator, you can uh, then select this thing becomes an actual object it's, as well. OK, uh, the, the infamous type tool. Yes, the type tool is right there. Just like just like any other program, the type tool, you can work on it just by clicking. If you click and type, right? This becomes an actual type box or type tool. I like how XZ has it a little differently. If you click and type, it becomes the character like an illustrator. But if you click and drag, it becomes a text box. Here is not the case. You just simply get the type tool. Regardless of how you type it, it becomes an actual text box. So there's, there's no way of doing this but one way. OK, so this is text. OK, and if you do resize the box, look what happens. Just the frame becomes bigger, but not the text. How do you make the text bigger? Well, um, if you use uh, the scale tool and then you go and resize it, right? You can also control the size over here, the properties on the right. Here's your point size. Okay, so I can go 64 points, right? Third way, you guys know the universal shortcut for changing point size that works in every program in the world? Yeah. That's like Google, I think. Which one? Alt, yeah. 
So watch this. This works in Microsoft, Adobe, Figma, okay? Command shift, less than, command shift, greater than. Trust me, it works everywhere. It just doesn't work in Google Chrome. If you use like email stuff, the email clients, you gotta use command plus and minus. But in every Adobe software, command shift, period or comma, which is greater than less, greater than less than, controls your point size as well. Okay, just a nice little tip for you guys to know. All right, we're gonna make this a heading. Heading one, right? Whenever you have something designed or selected in your artboard, pay attention to the right side of your panels. This is where you control most of your properties. In this case, this is an inter font that I chose, okay? I could pick a different uh, style. This one has a bold style, semi-bold, different styling over here, right? And again, I, I'm, I gotta be careful how I'm doing this because it's, it, it's, a, it's a text box. If I wanna resize it, I have to use my shortcuts or have to use my scale tool. I really like how XD had this little thing here. We can just kind of resize it with using the button, but that's okay, it is what it is, right? So we're gonna use it there. And ultimately you can go ahead and center this. Center, right, left, the alignment. You can also center it to the middle, to the bottom or to the top of the item. So I like to do that as well. So since we're talking typography before, let's apply it here. This is called a smart guide. It kind of shows you that the center is there as you're dragging carefully. Okay. This is your fill, so you can change the color of your text to any color that you like. As you get more familiar with this stuff, it's going to become easier. Okay. But for now, it's just, you know, just like anything else, you, once you use XD, for me to transition from XD to Figma was the first that was like, wow, like this looks different, right? Oh, it looks similar. But then when I started using the program, it became more natural. And a lot of the stuff kind of came in the same way. It's like using, uh, I don't know if you use Macromedia Freehand and Illustrator, like, kind of like a similar drawing program or like a Photoshop comparison to another digital imaging application. Okay, so now this becomes a text box inside my frame. So notice how the layer order is. This is the frame. Inside the frame is my text. So it's nesting within each other. Now look what happens. If I dra drag this outside, look, it's no longer inside. It's its own separate entity, right? But if I drag it inside the, the, the actual uh, artboard, or the frame, I should say, it became inside the frame. So be mindful of this, because if you're not, you can mistakenly put things in the wrong artboard, right? Always keep an eye on the artboard, always keep an eye on your layers, All right? Yeah, okay, let's move forward. Uh, so again, this is like your main tools here. This is your components uh, tab. This is when we're gonna start getting more interactive, I think. Maybe even next week or the week after, we're going to use more components and more advanced things we're going to get into the program. So this is where we're going to use that. We've got some plugins and some widgets, okay, which will help us expand more on the uh, application's capabilities, okay? This is your hand tool, just your, I like to use the space bar because it does the same thing. And this is your little chat bubble. You can add comments. So if you're collaborating with groups, you can say, hey, uh, you know, choose another font, right? So if people get this, you can actually go ahead and uh, message the stuff there. Okay, and once you hit the okay button, you can do QR code notifications, all these different things, right? A little way to communicate with messages. Mark resolved. That's how you delete it. You mark it resolved and the comment disappears. Okay. All right. So in a nutshell, that's your tools, right? 
Now, let's see how I always test the pen tool to see how advanced it is. So I'm going to go to the pencil tool and select the pen tool and see if we can draw something just quickly, just to see if we can control this thing. So let's see if we can draw a, I'm looking at the little logo that you have there. What's that, a Transformers logo or something? The Decepticons? Yeah? If we do like a Decepticon logo. So you go like this, like that, maybe like this here. Now look, does it cut the anchor? Yes, it cuts the anchor point. How cool is that? Even XD didn't do that. So I like how it, do you know what I'm talking about? Like when you do this and you want to cut the anchor point, just click. So it's really, really nice how they integrated the pen tool in XD, okay? Sorry, in Figma, in comparison to XD, that's what I meant, okay? Hey, let's do this here. Sorry, it's the free, eh? Even if you go through the steps, that's okay. Just use it for free for now, okay? I'll see if there's another option later on, right? But the pen tool works really well, apparently, okay? I think I'm gonna go done. All right, now let's go get some items into our background. So this is the frame that we have made. So make sure the move tool is your primary selection tool. Get used to pressing V on the keyboard because that's your selection tool. So if you're heading, you have your, your background. To click on the frame, you can click on it this way or that way. So I'm gonna click on the frame this way from the top left corner. And looking at the at the far right here, I can select, well, this clip content. We'll get into this another time. It's a more advanced feature, which it goes with, you know, like you do an image carousel and you drag images and they disappear and then reappear. There's a lot of cool things you can do with that. There's a layout grid. Finally, they have the layout grid there, which is kind of cool, okay? Um, that's how you can control the grid for the document. Uh, let me just show you again here what I'm talking about. So there's prototype and design. There's two, two settings here. Notice how XD had like share. Well, share is a button up here. You can do share this way and produce different things that we could in XD, okay? But going back here, you have things like uh, what's called auto layouts. Auto layouts is another cool feature that enables a lot of alignment options to work with complex designs. So again, these are more advanced features that we're gonna look at later. I can't possibly teach you the whole program in one class. That's what we have the rest of the semester to do all these little details in great depth and to explore different design possibilities. So auto layout, okay? Really cool feature in, in, in Figma. Uh, layout grid, it's just a grid. If you click on it, it just enables the grid to show up. And that lets you organize this in, in like, this is set to 10 pixels right now. So basically I can make it, I don't know, maybe a hundred pixels and I can change, so you can see the hundred pixel grid show up. Let me make the change a little darker. Can you see it now? I made it a hundred percent. You can change, let's do 25 pixels, right? So the grids help you control your, obviously your design layout better. And that's how you can integrate the grids. If you do want to delete the grid, basically, you can do another grid, believe it or not. Okay, You can do two grids, like a grid and a semi-grid. I'll be honest with you, I only stick with one grid, okay? You do have, look at this, you do have a layer blend mode, just like Photoshop. So you could blend images and colors through the background. So this is your called your layer blend modes here. There's even an opacity and a visible, right? So you can control the visibles of your layer within the properties on the right. Since this is the text item that I'm selecting, it gives me text options. If I'm selecting an image, it'll give me image options, right? Don't forget, this is like your main background and this is your header. And it's very important how you select the items. So watch carefully. If I click on the top left corner here, like this, I select the frame. Look, look what happens. All the frame options show up. If I click on the, the heading, all the heading options show up, right? So it's important how you go ahead and uh, control this selection process. I want everybody to select the frame. 
And down here, where it says fill, the default is white, which is the hexacode, F, 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 six Fs, which is the hexacode for white. You can change any color that you like, okay? For the background, go ahead and do that, okay? You can control different fills. This is for the artboard. Now, most traditional software, you put a rectangle as your background, and then that control because like the pin design for that. Illustrator. Can you change the artboard color in Illustrator? No. Unless you know a way. <laughs> you just put a rectangle, right? In design, you put a rectangle, a black rectangle, that's your background. Well, here you can change the color of the frame, which is the artboard. It's kind of cool. And you can actually do things within the artboard. So it's not a big deal, but that's that's how different it is, Figma. Here's another thing you do. You can do gradients, gradients, okay? You can do a nice gradient. You, you can do um, images. You can even do videos. I just, I was curious to see if I have any videos on my computer and I did find one. I, I put this on one of my Boston Pizza location screens that I have. So I just wanted to test it out. You guys can get an image. You don't have to get a video, but I just wanted to test it. I want to choose video. And I went to my desktop, and sure enough, I do have a Boston Pizza video that I made. I made this for my one of my screens because they're open late right now, so they wanted to promote that on their restaurants. So we did a little quick pizza spinning thing. No, I did this in, in, in After Effects. Yeah, After Effects. So I'm going to open this up. And there's the my background right now of the Boston Pizza video. But you guys can pick an image. Pick any image if you like. I'm going to delete the heading for now. So this now became like my background, right? Now, it's funny. How it, even the video has all these different effects. You see? I can still control all these different effects with the video as well. I can even control the opacity. You can do video in your free version. See, I don't know, because I had a free version, I was able to do some stuff, but then I didn't work with free version enough, I had a paid version. So this is the thing, if you guys have limitations, they don't even go video, there's not something that I'm gonna require you to have, so I wouldn't worry about it. But if you wanna be a professional and pay the money, I'm not asking you to pay today because you're in school. I know maybe you guys are, you know, you're in school. Maybe you don't work. I don't know. I don't want you to spend money if you don't have to. Use the free burden. Okay. I'm going to abstain from giving you things to do that you have to pay. This one just show us like three projects we have, right? I think so. Three is the maximum. So three projects like uh, export, like you can export three files. Okay. I think so. Like three different files. Yeah. If, if we are not saving that, will, it will not include the protection. Like, I think it will be a draft. Yeah. Try, try different things. And test the limitations. Maybe after that, <laughs> it will expire. Like, no, no, no. no. Well, just how you, you want to use another project, upgrade your membership. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry, I won't take long. It won't be. It's not like Adobe. Yeah. Here the time of submission. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, not, I know. Just, oh, no, it's, no, there's no expiry date. It's free forever. Like, uh, Okay, yeah, but three projects. Right. It just won't let you, like, you, you're going to do one project for me, right? But the UI kit will be one, and the other one will be two, two projects. So it'll be okay. I'm going to change this back to 100%. Okay. But just to show you, like, how this works, I mean, if I want to do a, see the play button, okay? I can do a present or preview. If I just do a, a preview for now, it'll give me a preview of the iPhone and how this looks like. So it shows, like, the video playing in the background of the phone. Do, like, one of those videos of the apps, right? Um, again, I would put an image or something. I'm not going to put a video because it might be too much, but you could have the option to do more with stuff. Uh, let me let me change it to to an image instead. Actually, you know what? I'm going to delete it. Well, be careful. Don't just press delete because <laughs> the whole hardware deleted, right? What you have to do is go back here under fill and change it from video to a gradient, okay? 
So I'm going to pick. I like how the gradient works works as well, because you could actually select this and move it around. OK, so you could control the gradient annotator, just like Illustrator calls it with the terminology. To change the colors, you simply go to and change the color. OK. It's a little tricky, but you can get used to it. All right, so go ahead and change the gradients. Pick any other color if you like. And that becomes our background. OK. OK, press escape. Sometimes you have to press escape, otherwise you're stuck in that gradient mode. Right, I was stuck myself. I was like, okay, I'm done with this. Now what? Double click, triple, or just close, um, or just close this little X menu here, and that'll also escape the the little message box if it gets annoying. Okay, right, so this is now the artboard. But let's create some kind of an element of design that we can use here. Okay, so this is like an app or like an intro screen or something like that. We can utilize this for going forward for something. So let, let's like design something for now, and we'll just kind of. Keep it simple and then later we can expand more on it. Okay. So what I want you to do right now is go to the polygon tool. Okay. And go ahead and make a make a polygon. Now watch this. Oh, it doesn't work. Up, up, down, down. It's just like XD, right? But that's okay, because I can after the fact go over here and tell it to give me. Here's the sides here. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can control the number of sides on the right side. Okay. So here I have an object here. And you can constrain the proportions if you want to hold shift. Okay. I can also add a stroke. Right now it doesn't have a stroke, but if, it, if you want like an outline, you can go add a stroke here and change the color to something else. And make like a yellow stroke. I'm gonna increase the stroke value to a higher amount. I'm just using the arrows going up, up, down, down. You can have the stroke on the inside, outside, or you can have it center, whatever you like, okay? You can also have an effect. You can do a drop shadow. You can do an inner shadow. You can do a layer blur, background blur, different cool things you can do. Um, I'm just gonna increase the amount here. So I'll do maybe do like eight, tab eight, tab eight. You can see it here. I can see it a bit on the inner shadow, right? If I give it a little more, you can see it more there. To, to change the effects, you got to click on the little star. And you can then do it that way. Five, twelve. You can see it now here, right? See the angle and stuff? You can do it that way. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and um, maybe incorporate another object or something just so you get some interaction done. So in that case, I'm going to ask you to um, maybe create another another object. OK, this time we're going to go to the. Use the pen tool if you want to make something. We'll just keep it simple for now. Okay, we'll do like another star. OK, so this is the star here. How do I center these two? I'm going to select both of them together, holding shift. Let, let me let me be more clear what I'm doing here. I'm going to change this to blue, OK? OK, so I drew a blue star inside this uh, pentagon shape. My intention is to show you, because you know what? You can't do stuff in Illustrator and Photoshop and 
bring the layout in here like you would in XD. You would have to literally build stuff from scratch in here. You, yeah, you can bring in EPS files and other elements, copy and paste, but you can also do stuff here too. Like if I go here like this and I go to subtract selection, right? Look what happened. I have a transparent star. Take off the clip. There we go. See this look? It's transparent. Remember like Illustrator, Pathfinder, subtract. Remember the Pathfinder tool, right? So that's what I did. Let me do it again, okay? So what I did was I selected both objects, this blue star with this, this other shape. So I both selected up here, okay? This is how you make, uh, you know, select matching, creating components, using masks. These are more advanced features we'll get into. But for now, even this is advanced, but I think it's good to know is by clicking on the arrow. See the little arrow? It's very detailed, guys, I know. But you got to click on the little arrow. You can select um, Unite, Subtract, in Intersect, or Exclude. You can do either one, okay? I'm going to go with this one here, Subtract. This way it punches a hole right through the shape. It's like a punching a hole business. And then it looks nicer like that, okay? So you have the punch of whole stuff. Okay. And then the whole thing becomes an object. Right, there's your logo. All right. Some colors, um, maybe do five points, right? It matters when you apply a different stroke with the drop shadow because it does affect overall design. So make sure your um, your drop shadow affects the numbers. Or if they're in the single digits, you want to keep those also in the single digits so it doesn't spread out too much. All right. Now, let's say we build an app where this logo, you know, comes down. This is us. Uh, I was looking at the company like Chrysler, or like a, like a star rated app, right? So this could be like an intro screen, and then it goes to the main menu, get a drop down and stuff. We can obviously build something like that later on going forward. But for now, I wanted to just quickly give you an introduction to, you know, how to kind of set up a project and how to save, how to how to um, how to view, how to share that kind of stuff. So this is your basic interface for Figma, basic tools artboard, different things, okay? Uh, now it comes down to interaction, which we're gonna cover next week as well. We're gonna get into the more advanced stuff, but very easy. If you click on the frame tool again, look what happens now. You can do copy and paste, okay? So you can copy and paste artboards and build projects. That's exactly how you do it, right? Look, here's another one, ready? Uh, command D, like duplicate, same like XD, Command D duplicates the artboard as well. So now what you do is you create a menu here and you make a different kind of uh, project on the other side. So very similar to XD, you just have to kind of wield the tools a little differently and you can easily adapt to one from the other. All right, uh, another one, another, another way to duplicate the artboards is to hold Option or Alt on your PC and just drag the whole frame over to the other side, right? That's another way to copy and paste. You can also go like this to the frame, watch this. Right click, um, I thought there was a duplicate option, but anyways, uh, you can do copy and paste this way as well, okay? Or paste to replace, you can do that one, okay? So there's several ways of selecting this option. Now, let's save the file, okay? So saving it, you go to file, okay? Uh, save as a fig dot fig file, okay? If you save it as a .fig file, it's going to save it local. Okay, it's going to save you where, because .fig is the extension for Figma. I'm going to go ahead and select the desktop. Open this up here. If we go to the desktop, beginner exercise .fig. I'm going to save it right there. If you forget to save it, if your computer crashes or something happens, like let's say you close the file. Guess what? It's automatically saved in your cloud. So you can actually click on it here and open the file, right? So it saves automatically basically as you're working on stuff. 
it's like in draft mode, right? And right now it is drafts, okay? So it's under your draft mode, okay? And if you go, let's say you lose your file, guess what? When you hand in files for me in this program, you're gonna give me the fig file because this here holds information for the Figma. Look, it's six megs. So everything that I did here is exported into a file. If you have the cloud and you have the local file. So if you open up the local file, it's gonna open up this here. Oh, uh, I'll, I'll do drafts here. Yeah, import. I have to select an option for it. Either way, it's going to open up two now because it's 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 a little confusing. It's saying this one is the one in draft. This one is the one here. So it's got two separate files. But again, you can have either one and you'll be okay. All right. So that about wraps it up this evening. Okay. I think we had a good little dose of everything. We we wrapped up the XD part, which I wanted to show you the interactive components. We racked up the, the the presentation for UX UI with the uh, with the uh, surface, and now we just touched up Figma. Which going forward, this is what we're going to be doing on. Okay, uh, next week you're going to hand in the the interactive thing in XD, and that's done. And we're going to do some more Figma work next week as well. I'm going to then talk about the next projects stuff, and and we'll keep going forward and enjoy the summer at the same time. Enjoy the nice weather out there, right? Try to have fun, okay? Because the time goes so fast, you'd be finished school in no time. Embrace your fact that you're here learning, you know. Just take a nice approach to it. It's, it's special. You, you don't get these days back, you know. It's nice to kind of learn and be there. Have fun, okay? Life's a journey. <laughs> all right. So nice to see all of you again. I'll see you next week, okay? And those of you that forgot to come, make sure you come next week. I noticed there's a lot of absences today. I don't know what the deal is, but... uh. You know, I, I expect you guys to show up. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna miss out on a lot of important stuff. Okay, I'm talking to the people watching the video. Okay, so bye for now. Have a good night, and I hope to see you all soon in the next class.